right. ClubWWI.com members. I'm standing by this week with a gentleman uh, who has been wrestling for the better part of two decades. He's been a part of uh, many successful tag teams. He's done many successful things. And long before they were in the boogeyman's mouth, well, he was making it a household name, the innovator of the worm, the one and only Mr. Scotty Too Hotty. Scott, how are you? Hey, James, how are you, man? Thanks for having me on, dude. And, and you, you say wrestling the better part of two decades. I always jokingly say that I've been wrestling for, for three decades since I had my first match in November of 1989. It was the, <laughs> it was the day of the Survivor Series, right? Uh, that's right. That's I, right. Br I, brilliant promoting on, on, the, on the job as a promoter. Go ahead to head to the Survivor Series. I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of research. I've, been, I've, I've followed your career almost, I think, from the very beginning watching you on TV. But before we get into that, uh, why don't we fill the fans in on, on what's going on by you and how things are in the world of uh, Scotty Tuhati? Oh, everything's great, man. I, I'll tell you what, the last, um, the last, thank you, the last, uh, the last year of my, uh, my life has just been, um, Phenomenal, man! It's been great. I've I've been able to um, you know continue wrestling and and uh, you know make a living doing what I love, and at the same time be home with my my kids and and, and my wife. And uh, it's it's been great, man. It's, it's uh, I couldn't ask for anything anything more, really. That's it's awesome to hear. There's so many wrestlers, and and for years you always you always heard about wrestlers who would leave the company, and then you know they weren't happy with this, they weren't happy with that. But nowadays, I guess with the travel schedule, if you're able to, to get out of the business uh, and you're still in one piece, and, and you get to be with your family at some of their formative years, a lot of guys, uh, it, it means more to them than, than being on television. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, and I get so sick and tired of guys leaving there and and uh, you know pissing and moaning for the for every interview they do. That's all they're doing, man. And, and I look at it like this, man. I'm a I'm a 200 pound kid from a small town in Maine, and I made it to the big time. What more can you ask for, right? Absolutely. Well, you are, you are actually a success story, I think, for a lot of fans out there listening, everybody who's interested in, in becoming a wrestler, maybe down the line, uh, to the point where I think it was even printed in WWE or F at the time magazine, uh, that you had written a letter to WWF asking them what, what training schools they go to. I mean, you really took a proactive approach in, in contacting the company uh, and asking what you had to do to become a wrestler, and, and you just followed your goal for it. Yeah, I wrote. I wrote to them. You know, never expecting to ever hear hear back. I think I just wrote something like, you know, what what school do you guys take your wrestlers from? You know, at the time you had the Hart School and in Kowalski School, and then you know uh, the Monster Factory, and then another uh, David Schultz School down in Orange, Connecticut. So there are all these different schools, but I didn't know which one to go to. And uh, so I sent them a letter and asked them. And uh, uh, Sue Agentson wrote back to me and said. You know, they don't take from any particular school, and basically, good luck. Well, you know, like almost uh, 10 years later, I met her, and I showed her the letter, and they put it in the magazine, so that was pretty cool, man. That's crazy. Well, some of my earliest experiences seeing you was uh, was one of the guys who, during Superstars, that one of the guys who didn't get the music. You know, you'd be in the ring already, Scott Taylor, and then, you know, somebody would come out, and, and you'd wrestle them for a bit. So, I mean, that must have, uh, at least for you as a young kid, uh, I mean, you were really young, too. I mean, I think it, it's deceiving. I don't think a lot of people realize how young you are based on the amount of time you've been in the ring, but it must have been overwhelming yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, people always think that I'm over 40. <laughs> and, uh, I'll, just, I'll be 35 next month, man, so I feel like I'm over 40. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I started, man, I must have been about 14 or 15 when I started first first training, and I had my first match when I was 16, and I had my first WWF match when I was 18. I just turned 18, so... Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's been a hell of a ride, man. It's been great. It's like one of those Terry Gordy stories everyone talks about. Yeah, right. It's right. crazy. I mean, but being in that locker room and, and being especially so young, I mean, obviously as, as an enhancement talent, it was it was different than being, uh, you know, I mean, you weren't really part of the locker room in the sense of, uh, you know, some of the other guys. But to be around them at such a young age, uh, and some of these at the time, too, some, some hardcore kind of grizzled veterans, it, I mean, was it, was it overwhelming, and, and how were you treated? It was, um, I was, I was always treated well there, you know, uh, uh, you know, when I first started there, I was like a human bump machine. I would take anything from anybody, you know, and, uh, and, uh, so, so they liked me for that reason. You know, the Beverly brothers always, always like working with me because I would take their finish and, and just jump as hard as I could and, 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 and land on my head and make it look great, you know, so, yeah, and, you know, and, and, and like you said, it was just crazy, man, because I would, I would literally be at a Superstars or a Challenge taping with Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker one day, and the next day, or two days later, I'd be back in high school, so it was, it was, it was crazy, man. 
nuts. Well, on top of it, too, I mean, how, how many times did you wrestle a night? Because back then it was, you know, they taped about three or four in, in one shot. Yeah, I think um, it was usually, you know, maybe twice at the most. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. It was a lot. I mean, I think it's so hard to get seen now, you know, with, with, since they don't use that many extras. And, uh, you know, that was that was my way in was, was, was by doing that. And, you know, it's, it's hard to be seen now because they, they, don't, they don't use any of those guys. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think one of, the, one of the best things about you and what made you kind of appeal to the fans was that, it, not only did we get to watch you like get these different gimmicks, but it was almost like fans who watched early on uh, got to almost grow with you in a way because we watched you go from that enhanced mentality. And you kind of kept the same name. It was Scott Taylor, and then when you started getting pushed, it was still Scott Taylor. Right, right. And, and you know, I think, you know, you look at how, how badly the, the Scotty Duhati character was, was driven into the ground, was trying to, they, I think they tried to kill it off, they tried to kill it off, but I think those fans knew, they knew the story, you know, they knew the backstory of what it took to get there and, and how long I'd been going. It wasn't just that character, man, you know, it was, it was the whole thing and my whole, my whole story of getting there that they appreciated and I think they respected that, so oh, yeah. they stayed behind me, man. I mean, one of the first, one of the first real big moments I think for you uh, that I remember was the, I guess it was a light heavyweight title tournament, or yeah, it wasn't cruiserweight, but it was light heavyweight title tournament on Raw, right. and you had you had even wrestled Brian Christopher, you ended up teaming up with. Uh, right. Did you know at that point was it kind of like, wow, I guess I'm I'm finally getting to that level? I mean, what was the point where you realized that that you were going from uh, from, the, from the position you were into the to kind of the next level? Oh God, I don't know. Even you know, even when when Brian and I were put together for that first WrestleMania, it wasn't. It didn't seem like, uh, you know, I had made it yet. Uh, I don't think it was until later on with uh, Too Cool that, that, uh, that I felt like I really made it. Because even when we were doing the Too Much thing, there were still the other guys like Edge and Christian, the Hardys that were, you know, had action figures coming out, had video games coming out, and, and we weren't getting that yet. So until we got the Too Cool thing, uh, it really hadn't seemed like I'd made it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Too Much, I think, was... Uh it's one of those gimmicks where I think you guys, you guys definitely pulled it off, but it, it was something that I think a lot of wrestlers sometimes, some of them would have a problem with. Did you ever have a problem with that? Because I know it was based on a, a lot of kind of an effeminate type of gimmick. It was, uh, it was with Scott Too Hot Taylor and, uh, and Brian Christopher, and you guys were doing uh, kind of some Billy and Chuck stuff long before Billy and Chuck were. Yeah, no, you know what, man, it was getting me on, it was getting me uh, out, out there, and I was having fun. It was so fun, you know, just goofing off, and uh, we could do anything, man. We could fall down, you know, or it, we were just clowns, you know, so it was, it was always fun. You know, I've never, I think, you know, that's part of the whole success thing is I've never taken myself too seriously, you know. But I've always been able to differentiate Scott Garland from Scott Taylor or Scotty Duhati. You know, I'm not that character, and I think a lot of people have a trouble have trouble with that, I mean, when they they leave the WWF or WWE, and and uh, they are that character, man, and that'll, that's, that's a train wreck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it turns into it. Oh, definitely. What, one of the funny things, too, is I, we just interviewed Paul Roma a few weeks ago, and Paul had uh, said that, uh, you know, people always complain, oh, you know, the fans are, uh, are following me around. He says, well, you know what? He's like, when I would go to the airport, I would dress like a human being. I would wear jeans and a T-shirt. He's like, if you're going to wear spandex, you know, yellow boots and, uh, and a cowboy hat, he's like, of course people are going to flock to you. So it kind of sounds like if you keep grounded enough, you can kind of uh, still kind of keep your, uh, who you are outside of the ring. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, because one of the other things that Too Much did, which I always thought was, uh, was one of my favorite moments, was when you guys kind of teamed up with DOA and you were wearing the, uh, the motorcycle helmets. And it seemed like such a strange kind of team up because, uh, I mean, the Harrises uh, weren't really known <laughs> for, for hanging out with a gimmick like that. How was it like working with the Harris brothers uh, in that capacity when you guys were, were playing that character? And, and did you get to have a little bit of fun doing it? Because, uh, yeah, it definitely seemed like a, like a mismatched uh, group. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Kind of, I think that was kind of our punishment for not going through with the whole uh, wedding angle. Okay. Uh, they, they threw us on the back of the bikes and made uh, made us their little girlfriends or whatever you want to call us, or and uh, threw pink uh, motorcycle helmets on us, and uh, and uh, it was fun, man. Still, you know, uh, you know, being with those those guys were great guys, and uh, and uh, that's, uh, being with them is actually where I came up with the worm. You know, I used to just do that at the beginning of the matches. Usually they would have a match, and we'd just be on the outside, being the cheerleaders or whatever, and, uh, they, you know, they'd say, do, do the worm entrance in the ring, and I would just do the worm itself. It was way before the WORM and the hoo 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 and all that, <laughs> all the shenanigans that go along with it, but just just to make the guys laugh, you know, it was, man. To have fun with it. That's one of the things, too, that Rikishi had said. He said that when you guys had first done Too Cool, that, that you were a little uh, iffy about it because you weren't really, uh, I guess, into dancing, he had said, but I guess the 
a worm is something you had done before that. Yeah, man, I've, I've never to this day even danced in public. Oh, man. You know? <laughs> so when they told us we had to dance, it was, uh, it was pretty scary. Oh, man, I can only imagine. Like, now, you said about the wedding angle, and that's something that I, you know, a lot of people had heard about and heard this, that, and the other thing. Uh, what exactly was proposed to you guys, and, and you know, was, it, was it your decision to turn it down, or was it kind of just a group decision that you guys decided not to? No, it was, it was, I was young and stupid and, and uh, willing to do whatever it took at the time, you know, okay. and, uh, and it was more Brian, you know, I didn't, it was not something I dreamed of doing, that's for sure, you know, but I was willing to do it, whatever, you know, and, and, uh, you know, Brian had more of a problem with it with, than I did, and uh, just said there was no way of doing it, and, uh, and then it was, it was shot down, and they really didn't do anything with us for, you know, I guess another year or so. Yeah. I mean, was that rough for you, especially considering that his, his dad was in the company? So, I mean, it must have, he probably came in there with, with kind of a different outlook on things than you had. So, I mean, it was kind of like, not only did you have, you know, as a tag team, a lot of people say, you know, you kind of, you're responsible for your partner, but in a way, almost, he also has, is responsible for his dad. So, it's kind of like a lot of people were, were affecting the, the push that you guys might receive. Yeah, I'm sure, man, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm sure my dad wouldn't have been too happy about it either, being a construction <laughs> worker. <laughs> I don't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But everything what? worked out, man. So it's all good. Well, let me ask you because one of the things about Too Cool, uh, before we get into like the starting them up and everything like that, one of the things that I still remember to this day, uh, it was the Monday Night Raw from Dallas, and it was uh, a five-on-five -five tag team. And I remember because the crowd was incredibly hot. And it was you guys, and it was this big group. I think it was the, the Radicals and and Triple H, and it was you guys and Rikishi, and and uh, I think it was The Rock and Sock uh, together. Yeah. And the crowd was on fire. And I remember you came out to do the worm. And people for the, I mean, people used to pop for it, but they went insane for it. And it kind of felt like that was like the real night where everything kind of took on this, uh, you know, went to a new level for you guys. I mean, do you have memories of that night and, and going out there for that match? Oh, definitely. You know, if, if people ask me which, which match stands out the most in my career, and that's the one I always say. It was magic. I mean, you couldn't have, you couldn't have done anything differently. It was so, so awesome. Like you said, everything just gelled that night. And, and, and man, you, you go back and watch that tape now, and the people just on their feet for the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, it was unbelievable. And, and, you know, that was, that was the point when, when I said, you know, we, I, I think we made it. You know, so. It's going to be a great feeling. I mean, just even when the crowd clicks like that, because it, it's, you know, I mean, they don't, people don't pop for anything. So, I mean, if you're out there doing something that's getting a reaction like that, it's got to be insane. Yeah, it was great, man. And did you forget, I mean, that's one of the things, too, that people even talk about The Rock, who ended up having one of the most over moves in the company at the people's elbow, but, yeah, you know, sometimes people criticize him for it and say, well, you know, it doesn't really look like a real move. I mean, did you ever get heat from, from guys for, for the worm because, you know, you did the move and then you stop and then you hit him? And did people ever say, you know, this isn't, uh, I mean, did you get heat for it? No, not from the guys. I mean, anybody who really understands what we do appreciates it. Yeah. Um, a guy like Road Dog would always volunteer to take it. You know, somebody who might not understand it would, would say, "Hey, don't leave me laying there for." And uh, by asking me to not leave you laying there, you just show me you're a total mark. I will lay, uh, you know, I'll leave you laying there even longer. You yeah. Know what I mean, I mean, I mean, everything we do, man, is is. Um, you're working together, you know, it's, it's like, dude, this is pro wrestling. If you're taking it this seriously, you just need to get out, man. We're not curing cancer here. We're just trying to entertain the people for two hours and send them home. You know, if you if you, you go to suplex, somebody gives somebody a, su a vertical suplex, their feet aren't going to automatically stick straight, straight up in the air either. Yeah. You know? so, so those people who, who get all worked up over that, man, they just need to, they, they need to get a life. <laughs> it's just entertainment, man. Just have fun with it. You know, it's, it's pro wrestling. Right. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I agree. I think one of the coolest things, too, is that you guys, and, and we, we just talked to Rikishi last week about this, uh, you guys seem to have the most fun. I mean, even the, the post-match dancing and everything like that. And getting together and finding out that you and uh, you and Brian were going to do the Too Cool gimmick, it kind of seemed, uh, it, it was a weird transition because it wasn't like, there wasn't really a repackage, so to speak. It, it was kind of a smooth transition from, from too much to, to too cool the way it kind of worked out. Uh, how was the idea first, you know, approached to you, and uh, and how did you know that you were going to go from one to the next? Uh, Russo, Vince Russo, had actually came came to us uh, and said, "This is right after the Hardy Boys had had switched their gimmick up, and and said, you know, we want you guys to go out and dress like the kids are dressing in the malls, and and try to try to look cool. You don't have to look cool. You're trying your best to look cool, and we're going to change it from too much to too cool. And that and that's all it was, man. Wow. And then the very next week on Sunday Night Heat, we we, we we cut a promo in the back saying, you know, too much is dead, and and uh, we're now too cool, and 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 that was it, man. We changed the clothes up just like the Hardy Boys had done, and uh, 
and every, everything else was pretty much still the same, man. I mean, if you look at a lot of the too much stuff, I was doing a lot of the goofy dancing and and uh, just, just a goofball, man. You know, I always said Scotty Too Hot, he never cared whether he won or lost. You know, he's just out there to have a good time. Well, was, thank God. I was going to say, that's one of the things that, that sets a lot of people apart. We've, we've had other people on who are in similar like one of the Bushwhackers did an interview, Bushwhacker Luke, and, and I said one of the things is that, you know, it seemed to me that guys who didn't really think about stuff like that, even with him, he would lose different matches, and people still loved him and remembered him, and it kind of seemed like, at the end of the day, it's all about what you do, it's not about who you beat, because it's, it's you know, it's, I mean, not work at the end of the day, it's not really, you know, winning and losing, it's just about how you entertain people. It's all just about entertainment, man. That's all it is. You know, I always say they can take their they can take their money and they can go sit sit through a two and a half hour movie, or they can come see us. You know, they have the choice. You know, it's, it's just entertainment. That's all it is, man. Well, one of the things you guys did, which I, I thought was uh, was really great the way it worked out, because sometimes it doesn't in wrestling, was the fact that you guys, you know, you were heels at first. You went out there as, as too cool, and it was kind of like. Uh, you know, the white guy is doing the, uh, you know, doing the dancing and stuff, trying to get some heat. And when you were able to, when you turned babyface, it, it still clicked. And a lot of times in wrestling that doesn't happen. You know, you take the heels who are kind of over because they're, you know, whatever their gimmick is, and you try to turn them yeah. good, and, and the crowd stops reacting. Were you worried about that, or was, were you surprised by the fact that how the fans uh, kind of embraced you guys when you turned? No, I could feel it. You, know, you could feel it when they they start to turn. You know, they started to turn, started to turn. And I think even even as too much, I think they liked us. You know, a lot of the guys wouldn't admit it because we were doing gay spots, mm -hmm. but we were just over the top and just just funny and entertaining to watch. I think. You know, I used to always do the uh, the, the the bouncing spot on the outside where I'd fall off and and uh, and get up like a you know I did it on purpose and I'd always do the spot. You know, Brian would do we do the spot where you know he would do something. To, to the, the baby face in the ring and come running over and give me a hug and pull me in and looks a little, you know, like we're just, we're clowns, man. And, uh, and uh, you know, people like clowns, I guess, you know, and, and we really didn't change all that much. I don't think we went to too cool. We started dancing a little bit more, I guess, and then we put Rikishi in there with us. So, um, oh, yeah. you know, and, and the rest is history, I guess. But it was fun, man. Well, I mean, it's also important, too, to have good chemistry with the person that you work with. And you and Brian, uh, I mean, at this point now, you guys have been together probably over 10 years, right? I mean, on and off, but since, uh, what, 97, I would imagine, right? Uh, let's see, 90, I think 98, WrestleMania of 98 was our first time together, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, it says a lot about, you know, the chemistry that you guys have working together. And, I mean, tell me about working with uh, with Brian. And, uh, I mean, did you just feel it? Did you just know at first that it was that it was going to click? Or was it, you know, after a little while you, you said, well, this is working? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think it was anything right away. You know, it was, uh, it took time, and then when, and then when uh, I can remember telling Rikishi, I think we were in Anaheim, we were outside after the show, man, we were waiting for our cars, and we're like, you know, what, we're gonna make money with this gimmick. You know, and you just, you just felt that. You knew it was, it was, it was magic. The three of us together, man, were, were magic. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have never, you could have never in a million years told me that was gonna work. Uh, I can remember when Michael Hayes told us they were gonna put Rikishi with us. I was like, this, you know, this, this sucks. You know, it just sucks, man. And then the very first night we did it, I knew, I knew we had something. That was that was the night that you guys did the, the three man. Was I don't know if it's probably the first night, but I still remember to this day seeing you guys do that that three man dance move right at the end of the match. You put the sunglasses on and you look down and everything. People would go crazy for that. It was uh, yeah. I mean, that was a big deal too because at the time there were so many people who would do post. Uh, I mean, the people who did the post match celebrations, people like Austin, The Rock, and then you guys. I mean, that's a pretty good company to be in. Yeah, right. I mean, they used to use us to uh, to use to close the show up. You know, a lot of times they would put Rock and, and Austin on right before intermission, and uh, you know, we'd have the two cool match you know, before intermission or right after intermission, and then Rikishi would, would do the last match, uh, and then we would run back out and do the celebration dance with the uh, with the other baby faces out there. So, you know, they could get Rock and Austin out of the building and onto the next town and. Uh, and we'd close the show. Not, not every night, but a lot of times they would do that, you know, especially going into a pay-per-view or something. Um, so it was, it was a great spot, man. At one point, uh, I was told that uh, we were selling more merchandise than everybody but The Rock. Oh, wow. So it, was, it was a good time, man. That's got to be awesome. I mean, again, as somebody who came, uh, you know, came from early on trying to get a job with WWE, I mean, at that point, you got to really look at where you are and just be amazed as a, as a former fan or as a fan. Right, and, and I think that's why I'm at the point where I'm at like, right now. It's like what, you know, even the last couple of years with WWE is where, you know, what, what what's left for me to do? You know, I know there's 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 more out there. You know, I could be higher up on the card now or whatever, but for me personally, 
you know, I was satisfied with everything I'd done, way more than what I'd ever wanted or expected to do. So, so for me personally, I was just, I was really satisfied, and I was, I was just, I was ready to move on at that point. You know, oh, I yeah. got my release from the company. So, there were no hard feelings, and and it, and, and it wasn't a sad day for me at all. So, so uh, all well, good, man. I was going to say one of the things that I've noticed from doing a lot of these interviews, uh, a lot of times, you know, fans aren't, aren't really too thrilled to hear people who go out there and just kind of, you know, trash the company. Because I think the idea at the end of the day is that. And, uh, you know, Bill DeMott said it. He said, you know, I'm, I'm this guy, and, and no one would know who I was if it wasn't for WWE. He's like, I'm not going to come out here and, you know, slam them, because when I was there, I loved it. He's like, and, and people who are there, they love it, and then they're gone, and all of a sudden it wasn't so great anymore. It's, it kind of leaves a bad taste in the, in the mouths of uh, people listening to the interviews. Sure, sure. It's just, it's just been done so much, man. <laughs> it's yeah. so bitter so many times. It's like, you know, sure, sure, you know, you'd like to have it end a different way, or, you know, you'd like to be able to choose your ending there, or, or, uh, or whatever, but, you know, I, you know, I, I, then I look around my house, man, and 99% of the stuff, that, the material stuff that I have in my house, I bought with money that I made with that company. Okay. So, so, you know, what, what would I have to complain about? Nothing, man. Nothing. There's, there's a lot of guys out there, there's a lot of guys there now that would like to, to do what I, what I, what I got to do there. So, so, uh, like I said, 200-pound guy, I can't complain, man. <laughs> of the Giants. Plus, as a, as, a, as a former tag champion, too, which I think is, uh, is something that should be pointed out, I mean, you, you guys won the, won the belts with that, with, actually it was a crossover at the time with, uh, with Kid Rock's partner, Joe C., was there. And it's funny you say that, man, because I, right now I'm sitting in Taylor, Michigan, the home of Joe C. Oh, wow. First show tonight, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say something about that tonight at the show. So. That's crazy. I mean, how was it? Because he's, uh, I mean, he's somebody that I, I loved, you know, Kid Rock and Joe C., and, and obviously passed away. I mean, what was it like getting to work with him, uh, you know, before he passed on? Oh, he was a great guy, man. He was just a huge, huge wrestling fan. He knew everything. He, he would always come around to the shows when we were up there. So, so when they told told us we were going to do that with him that night, I was just that was just more more icing on the cake. You know, it was just just another cool thing that I got to do in my lifetime. That's cool. Well, shortly thereafter, I mean, you had the, the situation where you were out with your injury, with your uh, your vertebrae. Uh, I guess you had to have surgery done, and they had done it as a storyline on TV. But as, as an athlete going through that, I mean, is, is it tough to, to kind of have that surgery and have to sit out after being as active as you were for so long? Did you go a little stir crazy, yeah, trying to get, you know, waiting to get back into the ring? Yeah, you know what, I man. Uh, people always ask me that, and and I really didn't because I just had my my first my first daughter, oh. my first child, my, my daughter who's six now. I just had her uh, in December, and then I had the, the surgery in April. So she was about four months old when I had my surgery. So I, then I had fourteen months off with her. So oh, it right. was it was awesome, you know. And I had ran pretty hard the year before. We did about we were gone for about three hundred days in, in two thousand. So so I was I was um. It was a nice break, you know, and and and, and I knew I knew that I'd be in a in a uh, a, de- a, de- a, de- a decent spot when I came back. So, all right. So, uh, so all was good, man. Well, one of the things about about your return after that, and you know, I mean, it's it's so funny because when we have you on, it's almost like you're completing so many sets. Because I've interviewed so many different people who, who have worked with you in different times. Uh, a Train was somebody that we'd interviewed, Giant Bernard, uh, and he got to play the role of the hip hop hippo. Yeah. And and. It's funny because it's, I mean, it's memorable, but it, it didn't really even seem to have the, the same kind of click that uh, you had with Brian, obviously, and, and with Rikishi. But, you know, working with him and, uh, and making it work as much as you guys did, how was that? And uh, it was such a different gimmick for him. Was, was it kind of tough to, to try to bring him closer to, to your character uh, and, and get him out of that whole scary, uh, hairy back type of, <laughs> type of thing that he was doing? Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it was our, it was, it was our idea, uh, uh, A-Trains, my, my, my ideas idea to put us together um we were friends we were traveling together and uh, we've been friends for a long time way before um, he was even with wwe and uh, he, he's a new, uh, new england guy too so um they put us together you know at our request and then uh they, they never really got behind it you know and and also our idea was that i would still be scotty too high at the goofball and he would be a train you know the you know the six foot five killer yep. and uh and, and then they 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 you know, they want to change it and make him a dancing goof like me. So I think it would have worked better the other way. Yeah. Him as, you know, let me play the little goofball and let him be the giant, you know, and, and the killer who, who, who's always got my back, you know. But, but I, I think by putting that, making him a dancing guy, it made it more like the Scotty and Rikishi thing. And what? It just didn't, it, it looked like he was almost a replacement for Rikishi. Yeah. Well, I mean, is it rough? Because it's something that, it's kind of a theme that comes up a lot of 
sometimes fans, you know, complain about something, and then you get to talk to the people who were involved in it, and it always kind of seems like they, they had a better idea for, for how to play it out than it ended up playing out. And it kind of seems like sometimes uh, things get changed, and, and you don't really find out why. And it, it's, it can kind of be like at the drop of a dime, next thing you know, uh, a storyline that you thought was going to go one way goes a different way because of uh, a writer did this or something else happened. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we did we did our first match in the Meadowlands in New Jersey, and we came back through the curtain, man. And people, I can remember Edge coming up to us and say, "You know, you guys are my new favorite tag team." And <laughs> and, uh, and Pat Patterson came running over. That was great, you know. And then the next week, man, we were in a six-man tag with Taz on SmackDown or Raw. I can't remember which. And uh, and and that was it. That was pretty much it, man. We did a bunch of house shows with Billy and Chuck, and uh, and that's all we really ever did. You know, I, I mean, I think we made one pay-per-view together, but you know, it that. I think it only lasted for a couple months, but man, it was a blast. You know, I, I love him, so he's, he's he's a good friend. So that's good. It's a good time. You know what I thought was one of the coolest things about about your career, uh, and looking back now, is that you know when you you left WWE, you're on Velocity, you work with Fernaki. Yet when you came back for Raw's 15 year anniversary, you got a huge pop from people as part of the the Battle Royal. Uh, it must have been nice to, to leave the way you did and then be able to do that return and, and see the fans, you know, still not only remembered you, but, you know, you were still in, in high esteem with all of them. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was, it was, it was a little weird to go back so soon. I, my release date was August 19th, I think, and I think the Raw thing was on December 10th, so roughly four, four, four months after I'd been released. So it was soon, you know, real soon, you know. It was, it was a little weird, but it was nice to also um, um, kind of break that ice and, and just kind of see everybody and say, you know, say goodbye, I guess, you know. There's a lot of guys there you become friends with over the years, you know, not only wrestlers but production people and, and uh, you know, a lot of backstage people that, you know, you don't know what you're going to see again. So it was, it was cool, man, and, you know, the, the, rea the reaction, was, reaction was great, you know. Well, you, I mean, you still, you, it sounds like you still have a, not only a good relationship with them, but obviously a good, a good outlook on it. I mean, is there ever a chance you think, I hate to say ever a chance because it, it covers such a long period of time, but right. uh, is it something that, you know, you, you consider uh, time and again about a possible return at some point to WWE? Oh, I think there's always a chance, man. You know, I'm very, I'm very, like I said, I'm very content with my life right now, my schedule, and, uh, uh, you know, and able to make, make a living, and, you know, a decent living doing this. Uh, but, you know, I think there's always a chance of going back. And, and I honestly, I would have a hard time believing that it's over, that you haven't seen me on a bigger platform than what I'm doing right now. You know, just with, with that with that character, I mean, it can be brought back at any time and plugged in, and, 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 uh, and I know it'll work. You know, so, so um, you know, never say never, man. But uh, I am content right now, so. But it also seems like, I mean, you kept saying uh, for, for a 200-pound guy to, to go as far as you do, but it kind of seems like, especially with the current environment in wrestling, it kind of seems like if there's ever a time for a 200-pound guy to, to <laughs> be featured. Yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's what I say. You know, and that's what's kind of frustrating. I've always been a, a drug-free guy. I've never never done any drugs in my life, so I don't even drink, man. So it's I'm like the, the poster child to be to be the guy there right now. So it's, it's, it's strange, man. You know, it's frustrating at times, and you have to see different things going on there. And, uh, you know, guys failing drug tests, and, and just, you know, you're sitting at home and... Uh, you know, that, that kind of thing frustrates me, but, you know, like I said, what are you going to do? Just, just just be glad that the cards are dealt. Well, it's like all sports, too, I think. It's, it's it's coming to the point now where the public is starting to just accept and feel like every athlete. And that's where you get a lot of frustration from people like yourself who, who have been in sports, who don't do drugs. The fact that everybody kind of gets heaped into the same, you know, mold of saying, well, all athletes do that, when uh, in many cases, well, well, a lot of them do, not not the majority. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And, you know, the media always wants to jump on that and talk about the negative, you know, when the whole Benoit thing happened, you know, you know, WWE does a lot of work, a lot of good work with um, with Make-A-Wish. I couldn't tell you how many, um, you know, Make-A-Wish um, meets I did over the years while I was there. And, you know, not once do you ever hear them, the media talking about that, that, that kind of thing, you know. And I know, you know, John Cena and Batista and Rey Mysterio, all those guys are still doing them to this day. And they, and nobody ever wants to talk about the good stuff. It's always the bad, you know. Oh, yeah. That's what sells. Yeah, they've got to fill up these 24-hour news uh, <laughs> news channels with something to talk That's right. about. That's right, man. Well, let me ask you, one of the last things I want to ask you, um, TNA. Uh, I know a few weeks ago there was apparently a mobile alert that they were thinking about bringing you. I mean, is there any... Any truth to that? Is there any thought on your part of, of perhaps going to TNA uh, or even for a one-shot deal? Well, man, I live a half hour door-to-door -door from where they tape their show. Okay. So it makes sense, right? But uh, there's been absolutely no talks whatsoever between us. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, you, you never know, man, but... Uh 
you know. Well, that, hopefully someday we can do something. But. Well, I was going to say, I, I've, it's something that I've read before and I've heard about. You're, you're, uh, I, I'm sure you spent a lot of time down there anyway. You're, you're a Disney buff from, from, from what I've gathered. Yeah, all the time. I mean, I was at Universal Studios yesterday. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I was just yeah. hanging out outside. Yeah, right, man, yeah. That's cool. That's, I mean, it's got to be I'm great. Lunatic. <laughs> it's one of the cool things too, because I just uh, I just had a, a baby a few weeks ago, and now uh, I'm, I'm a little bit like you in that there's things that I enjoy doing that are maybe more geared towards kids, and I'm excited to have a kid now because now I can do them as much as I want and yeah, get away with yeah, it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, my problem is I was doing it before I had kids. You know, I'm, I'm crazy, man. That's what I always say. I spend my stupid money on on uh, that on the theme park stuff. I've got like parts of rides from uh, the different theme parks and from Disneyland and Disney World both. And, and uh, you know that, that's that's my stupid money that I spend. I said, why, why do you need why do you need a the front of a Buzz Lightyear ride vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you need the front of a Buzz Lightyear ride vehicle? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm the coolest dad in the neighborhood, though. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna drop your kid off at school on that? That'd be great. That's right. Well, one of the last questions I want to ask you, we ask all of our guests the same question. And for you, as, as somebody who grew up watching, I'm sure there's going to be, uh, you have a lot to draw on. If you could pick anyone, maybe somebody that you watched when you were coming up, maybe somebody that you just never had a chance to cross paths with uh, in your career that you say to yourself, I wish I could have worked with this person. Who would you pick and why? Uh, probably Hulk Hogan. Okay. Never, uh, never got to uh, do anything with him. You know, I met him a few times when he, when he came around for his, you know, toward, towards the end of his, his WWE days, and uh, and uh, you know, to be honest, I wasn't a Hulk Hogan fan as a kid, uh, but as I got older and I and I, I learned more about the business and just just timing and all that stuff, I came to appreciate him more. And uh, you know, he would always pop in at the right time and and uh, leave at the right time, it seemed. And uh, and uh, you know, there were guys like Shawn Michaels and Owen Hart. Uh, those are those are the guys that I always name as guys that I looked up to and modeled myself after. I think uh, as a wrestler, but I, I wrestled Owen a number of times, and I actually wrestled Shawn Michaels once. I would like to, to have a, another match with Shawn Michaels at some point. That would be great for me, man, because he was he was it for me growing up. But but as far as somebody who I never did anything with, uh, Hulk Hogan. Oh wow. I, you know, it's funny because I totally relate to what you're saying about how we're, we're close to the same age, and I remember as a kid, you're early on, I'm, I'm, I'm 31 this, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, I'm, I'm 16 now, um, I, uh, well, well, growing up, I remember early on, I, I liked Hogan, and then, I think it was like around 86, 87, it got to the point where every match you would watch it go, and I got to the point where I, I just was convinced he was never going to lose because they could shoot him in the face with a shotgun, and he would start shaking, and the match would be over, and sure. more, yeah. my friends would all be mad. Yeah, and you know, you speak of like, you know, the worm and the people's elbow, and that, there's another fine example right there, you know, all that stuff that he did, and, you know, Warrior did, you know, all, all, the, all the hokey stuff, man, people mm -hmm. love it, you know, it's just, just take it for what it is, you oh, know, yeah. it's just entertainment. I mean, there was one where Savage had given him a flying elbow, and then turned around, and Hogan just stood right up, and the whole crowd yeah. went crazy, and there was a couple yeah. people in a row that were pissed, but at the, as a whole, yeah. people loved it. Yeah, yeah, they're not there to, 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 to because they think it's real, they just want to be entertained by it, man. Oh, yeah. Well, Scotty, before I let you go, we give you a chance to speak directly to all your fans. Um, so what do you have to say to all your fans out there who have been following you since uh, day one? I just say, you know, thank you very much for letting me live this dream, and, uh, and uh, you know, thanks thanks for, for all the WWE years, and and, uh, and, and now, man, the, the people, they, they come out to see me, um, and all the stories I get to hear. And, uh, it's, it, the last year, like I said, has been has been great. And uh, just being able to meet all these people and just, just say thank you. Thank you for all the support, man. Scotty Tumani, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, thanks, James. Thank you very much.